watching some of the games in the Olympiad of Hare Krishna, I am sure you must have understood that uh, Hare Krishna is very good with end games. And this game proves yet again that he is the god of end games. So let's look at this game which took place yesterday between Linear Domingues and Hare Krishna in uh, St. Louis Rapid and Blitz. So this was the first round in the Rapid event. And here Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pantala is black. And he opted for Karagan with e4, c6, d4, d5, e5, bishop f5. So this e5 is called the advanced variation in the Karagan. And after knight f3, e6, bishop e2, c5, bishop e3, he played queen b6. And after knight c3, there are different variations possible here. One of them is queen takes b2, which is a very complicated line. But here in this game, Hare Krishna went with knight c6. He prioritized the development of his pieces and after knight a4, queen a5 check, c3, we reach a very critical position. In this position, cd4 has been played before, but here he decided to play c4 and close the center. Now that means that after c4, white has this possibility to break with b3 if needed or play on the queen side. But in this position, you can see how Hare Krishna handles everything on the queen side after c4 White plays b4. In this position, bishop into b4 has been played before. After bishop takes b4, c takes b4, the idea is to go with the knight to b4. And here, if white escapes from this discovered attack with castling, there is bishop c2. And that is the point. With this knight, you support the bishop and then this knight falls. So that means black wins two pawns. Because after that, he'll just pick up the piece that he gave with bishop b4. The point is after knight takes b4, white goes knight c5. And he's inviting this deadly discovered check, which is apparently not so deadly. After knight c2 check, king f1, knight takes a1, queen takes a1. We reach a very interesting position, which could make a very good exercise for you to try it against a computer or a friend. So when you play out such positions, it could help you in improving your understanding of the position. So though black has you know two rooks and white has pieces, it's not that easy to evaluate. Black has you know, extra pawns on the queen side, but if white manages to coordinate his pieces and launch an attack, he stands better. And if black manages to roll the pawns on the queen side, he stands better. So it's not easy to say which side is better in this position. You can check out this game. Uh, the game goes on with Queen C7 and G4 and so on. This is a game between uh, Lagarde and Riazansa. Coming back to our game, Hare Krishna dropped his queen back to D8. And after castles, he plays bishop to G6. Now you might be wondering why he is moving the same piece again. He has already developed his bishop to F5, but he's playing bishop G6 to give space for the knight. He wants to make space for this knight so that it could come to e7 and it could come to f5. Once this knight comes to f5, it can control a lot of squares, but one must be concerned about possible g4 in the long run. You will see what he does against it. After bishop g6, linear Domingues played knight e1 and then black went knight g e7, f4 and now knight f5 attacking the bishop. Bishop drops back to f2. Now in such situations, after cementing the knight on f5, it's important that you secure that place for your knight. Because a possible g to g4 means that your knight has to retreat back. So in this position, he prevents any kind of g to g4 with h5. But you must understand that after playing h5, it's not sure that uh, g4 will not come at all. Because after h3, g3, g4, he might get that g4 break in the long run. But let's see what happens in the game. After h5, white played knight b2 and here there is a possibility to go a4, b4 and so he plays b5 and then on a4 he plays a6. Now the position on the queen side all depends on how you operate this b5, a4 contact. If you exchange with b takes a4 then this pawn on a6 could become weak. But at the same time, if white manages to pile up a lot of pressure on the queen side, then a5 will be his. For example, if he gets his rook here, then this rook here, and then this queen here, the typical Alekhine, you know, Alekhine way of uh, tripling, then 
he might hope to seize an open file and in a position where the center is closed, having one file can make a lot of difference. But let's see what Hare Krishna does. After a6, knight c2, he develops his bishop to e7 and after queen d2, he castles. So when I was looking at this position, I thought what I would do as white. So since I know that a lot depends on what I do on the a line, I thought what about rook a2? My idea is to double. Now on rook a2, black will simply play queen d7 and on rook f a1, he'll play queen b7 because now after rook f a1, white is threatening to capture on b5. Remember that the rook is protected only once. So he'll play queen b7 and then what if I decide to do the tripling? Let's see if I go rook a3, then in this position black is already having a5. So it's not so easy to play rook a3. Also in the first instance, if you play rook a3 directly, then you might have to worry about the same trick after queen d7, rook f a1, he plays queen to b7 and then there is a possibility to play a5 again later because this rook is not really well placed keeping the bishop in mind. So I thought okay after rook a2, queen d7, rook f a1, rook f a1, queen b7, what if I try to exchange this knight and I think that is what white should have done. He should have played knight d1 to play knight d3 and once this knight gets exchanged I think it's easy to play on. For example after knight d1 if black plays a5 then there is a takes b5, queen takes b5 and this rook on a8 needs support so we cannot really take on b4. And then white can play knight e3 and then you're, you're forced to exchange and after knight takes e3, knight takes e3 there is this f5 trick which could be annoying for black. I think the game should have gone like this but Instead, instead of going for rook a2 or rook a3, white went with a takes b5, clarifying the situation on the queen side. Now after a takes b5, rook takes a8, queen takes a8, rook a1, for a moment it feels like white is in control of the a line, of the a file, but after queen b7, rook a8 is coming immediately. So after rook a1, white played knight d1 and black played rook a8. This position is roughly equal. Uh, you might feel that all pieces are getting exchanged and the game might be ending in a draw. But being Hare Krishna, I mean the way he plays end games, it is amazing how he is able to pose small and small problems and then is able to bring a lot of force and pressure in the end game and win games. It's not just this game, there are many games in which he is able to outplay his opponent. Uh, some of them include swindles as well. So after Rook a8, queen c1, rook takes a1, queen takes a1, he plays f6. Now this is very important. In this position, if you ask about which piece is doing what, the queen on b7 is okay, the knight on c6 is okay, the knight on f5 is also doing okay, but this bishop on e7 has some trouble. So considering that, if you are able to develop this bishop to a better square, it will be of great help. But then which is the better square? So especially in situations like this when you are not sure what to do, consider the pawn breaks in the situations because pawn breaks can lead you to plans. So in this position f6 is a pawn break available to black. Similarly white also has a pawn break in the form of h3 g4 but it is black who gets his pawn break first. So after f6, queen b2, he plays f takes e5. Now the problem is if white takes f takes e5 then there is bishop g5 coming. So you see. The dream of the bishop is fulfilled partially. The bishop has come out. Now in case of d takes e5 which is what happened in the game, it doesn't stop black from improving the position of his piece. So he plays bishop d8 to go with his bishop to b6. And after knight d e3, knight takes e3, bishop takes e3, black plays bishop b6. Regarding exchange, I am coming to a very important point after knight d4. It's a point to remember. I have noticed this in a lot of master games that they see what is left after the exchange. It's not important which piece you exchange but what remains after the exchange. So in this position he plays bishop takes d4. The position is closed in nature so knights could be of great help here so he gives bishop into d4 but also important to realize what remains in the position after bishop d4. We have a very good knight, very good bishop. And then white has bishops but there are no targets uh, that white can attack easily. So after bishop d4 in this position actually black has a very nice way to immediately uh, put a lot of pressure 
which uh, Hare Krishna missed in this position. He played queen f7, but he could have changed the move order and played knight d4 first, and then after cd4, queen f7. The point being, the pawn on c4 is now a passed pawn, and if the queens are exchanged or if you threaten in such a way that I am either going to exchange or promote my pawn, I think black will have winning advantage in this position. After queen f7, if I, let's say, protects this pawn with g3, then you can go queen f5 and then consider playing queen e4 or also play something like queen b1 and then threaten to you know, promote this pawn to a queen. But in this position after knight d4, cd4, queen f7, even in case of queen c1, let's say if white doesn't weaken his king side by playing g3, if he plays queen c1, black has queen a7. And somehow he manages to get the entry. Once you get the entry, you use your queen and you help this pawn to promote. Black wins in that case. But in this position, black played queen f7. Black, the position is equal now. Uh, white can still hope for some defense. After queen f7, he went queen d2. Now knight into d4 is met by queen takes d4 and it's not the same anymore. Okay, so he played bishop e4, pawn to g3. And here we have another pawn break, h4. Now, since uh, getting the a-line immediately involves giving up the knight, he decides that uh, he could use the h-line to further improve in the position. So after h4, queen e3, hg3, hg3, he goes queen g6. And after king f2, he goes queen h6. So now black has some play, but uh, position is still even and uh, white has to be careful. After bishop c5, queen h1, bishop g4, king f7, they repeat once. Um, could be for the sake of increment and then after bishop e2 Hare Krishna plays queen b1. Remember this is the first round in the event and uh, both players are uh, you know just coming into the tournament. After g4, queen c2, king e1, Hare Krishna finds a very interesting trap in this position. He plays bishop d3. Now in this position by interposing the bishop in between the c3 pawn now is unsupported so he wants to take on c3 so white should have played queen d2 to support the pawn after queen d2 let's say if black goes queen b1 check there is queen d1 and now if you think of undermining this pawn chain with g5 then there is bishop d3 and all the pieces get exchanged and the game fizzles out because after queen d3 d3 you capture everything you support the pawn and even after you play d4 the position is no longer winning for black and then the game will soon end in a draw. This could have happened, but in this position, white made a mistake. White played bishop takes d3, and after that, black won a pawn with queen takes c3 check. And this is where I think white made his last mistake. He should have played king e2 and uh, supported the d3 point, and after cd3, queen d3, the game still goes on. The point being, after queen d3, king d3, when you go g5, the pawn on f4 can be supported with the king. And after queen d2, he transposed into a winning endgame after queen d3, queen d3, cd3. If white plays bishop d6 to support the pawn on e5, that doesn't stop the result. After g5, black will eventually win. After f5, there is gf, there is ef, gf, and then knight d4. And now if white goes e6, black will go king e8, and there is nobody to protect the pawn on f5. On f6, this e6 will fall. And in this case, if there is f6, then black can simply play you know, knight f3 check and then hope to promote this pawn. Again, in this variation also black wins. In this game, in the position white played king d2 and then black got this opportunity to play g5, the pawn break. Now, if f4 pawn falls, then e5 pawn will also fall and once e5 falls, the g4 also will fall. So they will, they will all fall together in this position. So after g5 fg5 black played knight takes e5 also ensuring that the pawn on d3 is protected and after king c3 black played king g6 and after bishop e3 he went knight c4 now if you take king takes d3 black will anyway transpose into an endgame which is winning and if you go bishop c1 there is d2 again transposing into a winning endgame in the game white played bishop c5 and after d2 king c2 he took king takes g5 and here white resigned so that was um, a very nice game by Hare Krishna 
So we know that he's very good in end games and he keeps on showing us with his games uh, on how to play end games and how and why he's so good at them. I hope you liked uh, this uh, game of the day recap and uh, I hope uh, Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pantala wins more games and uh, we get to see more of uh, his wins in, uh, in the coming days on our channel. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel. I'll be back soon. Take care.